Hey everybody, Mike here. So in this video, I'm going to talk about eight different skills that we use when we're finishing concrete. You know, sometimes I take some of these skills for granted because it's just stuff that we do every single day. And it's like a normal part of our life. But what I want to make sure I, I, I help teach you guys is just the, the little things that we do that help give us success when we're finishing concrete. So that's what we're going to talk about in this video. Now make sure you stick around for the whole video because I'm going to try to explain this the best I can. And I want you to know also that I teach all these skills in much more depth inside the Concrete Underground, which is down below. There's a link for that down below if you want to check that out. So again, the Concrete Underground is down below. Now skill number one is cutting down a garage door for if you're finishing a garage. You know, how do you taper those doorways? And basically this is how we do it. You know, we dig out about a half inch of concrete along the form and then we just use our mag float to taper that edge down and give that edge a nice tapered feel so when they drive in the, the garage, they're, they're not hitting a square edge. Also, the garage door sets down on this so any rain that hits the outside of the garage door and runs down the door is going to hit that taper and run out. And then another thing we do is, is we mag float our edges. You know, when you pour the concrete and then you bow float it, there always seems to be a little bit of a, of a, either a dip or a tiny bit of a hump right around the edge. So it's important that you mag float them out and get them nice and smooth and level. That way when you go to power trowel, your edges look just as nice and clean and sharp and smooth as the rest of the floor does. So this is one of the basic things that we do. And there's a, there's a certain time when it's best to do this. Um, if you do it too early, then it's not really going to help out that much. And obviously you don't want to do it too late because then you won't be able to work up any pace like I'm working up right there. Now this is one thing that we do that maybe a lot of other people don't. Right where there's a doorway, we usually cut in a joint right here because the concrete floor usually cracks off one of those corners to the doors. You know, you'll see a small shrinkage or diagonal crack off that. And by putting a joint right there, or even saw cutting a joint, you usually minimize the door from cracking there. So being able to cut joints with just a simple hand joining tool like this is real key to being a good concrete finisher. Um, the joints can be something decorative or they can just be something functional, which is what we're going to do in this case. And then we usually always edge wherever there's like a walk-in or a place you drive in. We usually always edge the form right there just around that edge. It helps make it a little bit stronger. And then once we use a joiner and an edger like this, we always flatten it out with a mag float after so we don't leave those marks in the concrete. You don't want to leave them there as the concrete hardens because they'll just be harder to get out down the road. Now another thing we do when we have a floor drain in the floor, whether it's a garage floor or house floor, this one happens to be a center drain in the garage, is the, the concrete always sags just a little bit when you pour around it. You know, you pour around it, you mag around it, then you bow float around it. It usually leaves the concrete a little bit high, like an eighth to maybe sometimes a quarter high. It's important to dig that down and match that drain. So when you're all done power troweling, it looks nice and smooth and professional. I mean, you don't want the concrete higher than the floor drain. You definitely don't want it lower than the floor drain. But you definitely don't want it higher. It just doesn't look good. It doesn't look professional. So we wait for a certain point for the concrete to get a certain firmness. Basically, you can see how firm that is. I'm walking on it. It's just about ready to power trial. And then we scrape out that high. And then we mag float it nice and smooth and match the, the floor to the drain and that makes it finishing so much easier. Another thing we do, you know, obviously we power trowel. Just about every single floor we do, we power trowel. And knowing the timing of when to get on the floor is key. You know, there's a certain time when it's just right, and then there's also all the other times when it's either too early or too late. And knowing the timing is, is really a good thing for most finishers to understand if they want to be good at finishing. And, Again, I go over all this stuff in the Concrete Underground, so make sure you check that link out down below. Luke's one of the best at finishing. He can, he can finish the floors with the best of them. And then there's a certain pattern we go by, too, when we finish floors. 
and the pattern we use helps level the floor out even more helps get rid of any little tiny dips and humps so you got a nice even plane and you can see now I'm finishing with a steel trowel around that drain once once Luke goes around it with the power trowel you know you want to get right on it after and match it right in with a hand trowel and we do this every single time we hit the floor with the power trowel so a, a garage floor like this will probably take four to five hits as we're finishing for it before we're done and it's nice and smooth and you can see once Luke goes by an edge with a power trowel then I'm gonna go right after him with a hand trowel and get it nice and smooth and finish that off and then I'll recut that joint back in with a joiner and make sure that joint looks nice and smooth and clean and neat before I get done and we'll do this two or three times throughout the process to make sure everything looks really really good before we're done now to finish off those garage doors, you know, you got to hand trowel them, get them nice and smooth, clean them up a little bit more. You don't want to just, just leave them the way they are. So hand troweling them each pass. We usually go over it with the power trowel this one time. Sometimes we'll hit it again a second time. And then we'll hand trowel these doors like I'm doing right now. So this is the initial trowel. And before we give the final finish on that little taper down, and then sometimes we'll, depending on how firm the concrete is, we'll either broom it right, like right away like I'm doing now, or we'll wait and hand trowel it again and then broom it right after that. But this one was setting up pretty fast on us, so we gave it the nice smooth broom finish. And that'll be the finish on that little tapered part. And then to finish the front of the door, we'll just give it a nice edge. And we usually leave the edger mark because it just looks a little bit more professional in my opinion. A little more clean so the the taper down gets a broom finish with an edge like this and then the rest of the floor just gets a nice smooth power trowel finish and then the next thing we do as as Luke's troweling I'm coming right behind him with a steel trowel and I'm making sure those edges are all nice and cleaned up after each hit that way when we're all done everything looks nice and smooth so those are the basic finishing skills we use on an everyday basis and if you want more in-depth training, you want to learn how to do this like a professional, again, check out the Concrete Underground. The link is below. Thanks again for watching, guys. We'll see you on the next one.